We're here to talk about Wordle starting word strategy, which is the one way to game Wordle that doesn't feel like outright cheating. So let's get into it. You've got 26 letters in the alphabet. Of those, five plus the letter Y at times are vowels, the basic building blocks for most words. So at a very basic level, any five letter combination that helps you rule out more vowels early is going to trim down possible answers. With that in mind, we can immediately pick out a few ideal starting words. There are others, but ado, audio, and Ouija all cover four vowels. You won't know if any yellow or green letters appear twice, but you can at least eliminate some critical letters right at the start. Now that's good enough for most people, but it's also not that simple since not every letter is created equally. Yes, vowels appear in basically every word, but some are more or less common. The same goes for consonants. And then there's also the matter of the Wordle Dictionary. There are more than 10,000 words the game will recognize as allowable guesses, but there's a much smaller list of words, only a few thousand, that qualify as possible solutions. And the New York Times even trimmed down that solution list when it acquired Wordle. So while you could use a more obscure word like Orii, the plural form of Aureus, an ancient Roman gold coin, for a guess, it's not going to be the day's answer. If going vowel heavy isn't enough and you want to cover some of the more common consonants as well, Raise is an ideal starting word since it covers the three most common vowels and the two most common consonants as they appear in dictionaries. What is the best Wordle starting word really? If you don't want to risk feeling like you're cheating Wordle, you might want to stop watching now. Okay, cool, you're still watching. The strategies we've walked through thus far will give you an edge, but if you want to dive deeper down the rabbit hole, a mathematician and computer scientist named Grant Sanderson made an excellent video on the topic. In it, Sanderson applied his knowledge of information theory to Wordle, and he coded some testing programs that measure things like letter frequency to determine the best of the best starting words. It's a dense 30 minutes of explanation that's heavy on the math talk, but Sanderson's friendly demeanor and willingness to take the time necessary to break down complex ideas makes it a must watch for Wordle diehards. So yes, go watch it. But the ultimate takeaway leaves us with crane as the best Wordle starting word. But don't get too confident. It's not that simple. Because Sanderson's breakdown focuses on letter frequency, crane is just the first stage of information gathering. It's only the best if you use what you know about the right and wrong letters in that first word to inform a perfect second guess. <sighs> is your head swimming yet? Are you ready to go back to guessing a random word every time? Wait, because we're not even close to done yet. Sanderson dropped another video a week after the first one titled, Oh wait, actually the best Wordle opener is not Crane. Turns out there was a slight bug in his original test program. But he says right up front that the bug affects a very small percentage of cases. So it doesn't totally undermine all the lessons from the first video. Without getting too much into the heavy math, the bug relates specifically to solutions that have multiples of the same letter and how Wordle handles that. Sanderson felt the need to put out a second video because even though very little of the takeaways from the original video change, the final conclusion is effective. With that in mind, Sanderson's updated ideally starting word is salad, an alternate spelling for salad, which was a type of helmet worn during the Middle Ages. That said, trace and crate work nearly as well, especially since they're both actually potential wordle solutions. But keep in mind, one of the most important takeaways from all this math is actually really simple. Your first guess is only strong in the context of the guesses that follow. That's the whole game of Wordle in a nutshell. But, but, <laughs> there's another school of thought on how to approach solving Wordle. <sighs> Strap in, here we go. Instead of playing it as intended, using each previous guess to inform the next one, you could stick to the letter frequency game and try to rule out the most common letters, consonants, and vowels both up front, irrespective of any clues you pick up. This approach effectively wastes your starting stretch of guesses on locked-in choices that are meant to narrow down the number of possible letters you have to work with. Just know that if you play Wordle in hard mode, this strategy won't work since each successive guess needs to include any letters that are confirmed to be in the solution by the previous guess. Is there a best Wordle starting word that doesn't go so hard on all the math? <laughs> all this is getting ridiculously complicated for a game about five letter words. For those who don't want to dive into math land, YouTuber Bentelect has a short, sweet breakdown of his starting strategy. Ratio first, then men's, then lucky. That's it. 
With those three choices, you'll have slimmed down the list of possible letters to the point that figuring out the solution with your final guesses becomes significantly easier. It's not a surefire winning strategy for everyday's puzzle, and there are other similar combos that might work like scaly, guide, and thorn, but the premise is the same though. You're narrowing down the list of possible letters that could appear in the solution by casting the widest net possible, alphabetically speaking, with your first three guesses. So there you have it. There's no single perfect starting guess for Wordle. There are lots of them. You can keep guessing random words first, but if you want to win at any cost, hopefully this rundown of what works best will get you closer to climbing that daily streak into the triple digits. Hello everyone and welcome to the actual last game we'll be showing from the FIDE candidates tournament. I didn't uh, I think I was going to show it but so many of you requested it and it is a fine game uh, so I thought all right let, let's show it and we're going to discuss the standings a little bit but only a little bit because we've discussed it at length in the previous video and also something you guys requested is uh, to show what happens uh, to the uh, actual uh, ranking uh, because the, the some players lost uh, rating points some players gained rating points who entered the top 10 who dropped out of the top 10. Uh, and so on. But we're going to discuss this after the game. Uh, you guys will enjoy it. It's Fabiano Caruana versus Salireza Firuja. Uh, both of them not having the tournament of their lives. So, okay, for Salireza, it's the first candidate that he's uh, uh, playing. Um, uh, most likely not the last. But uh, Fabi, everyone expected him to either win it or, you know, to, to almost win it. But here he's having a disastrous second half of the tournament. First half of the tournament, he was just crushing everyone. Okay, not, and he didn't win all the games, but he didn't lose any of the games and he won some of the games. But here, uh, in the second half of the tournament, as it's a double round robin, uh, zero wins for Fabi and, uh, well, many losses and many draws. So far, he has three draws and three losses. And now he has um, a chance to finish the tournament on a high note. Uh, he, ha he does have the wi uh, white pieces in the final round. So let's see what happened here. Fabi has the white pieces and he opens with e4 uh, sorry about that uh, we have e5 by Alireza, uh, knight to f3, knight to c6, and now uh, bishop to b5. The Rui Lopez is on the board, knight to f6, we have the Berlin defense, as everyone is playing that, uh, obviously. d3, bishop to c5, and now b captures on c6, or rather bishop captures on d uh, c6, d captures on c6, knight b to d2. Uh, we've seen this many, many times, knight is coming to c4 to go after the e5 pawn, so of course knight to d7 and f6 will be played, we've seen this many times as well. Knight d7, castles, and uh, Alireza castles too. We have knight to c4 now, uh, attacking the e5 pawn, f6 by Alireza, and the king to h1. Uh, and here there are some games where a5 was played, but Alireza plays rook to f7, and it is now already as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so, uh, Fabi goes knight to h4, uh, he wants to put the knight on f5, also this opens up the uh, uh, possibility of pushing f4. Uh, bishop to f8, uh, and now knight to f5. We have knight to c5 now, opening up uh, an attack towards the knight, and the queen to h5. Nicely defending this knight, we have bishop to e6, putting pressure on this knight, hoping for, uh, to capture and then maybe d captures on c4. But now Fabi just plays b3, and now of course if you capture, we're gonna capture with the b pawn and everything is perfectly fine. Uh, queen to d7, uh, developing the queen. Alireza now prepares to bring the rook into the game. Bishop to e3 and now king to h8. Uh, uh, we have knight to h4 now, uh, trying to take advantage of this weird um, uh, square that the king is occupying to go knight to g6 check maybe as the h-pawn is pinned, but just king back to g8. We have queen back to e2 by Fabi and now rook to e8. So Fabi has to figure out a different way of how to uh, reach Alireza's king. Uh, we have a4 and now pawn to b6. We have rook to g1 and here by playing rook to g1 Fabi is saying that he is not uh, of a peaceful mind. He wants to play g4, open up the position, put the knight back on f5 and start some sort of an attack against Alireza's king. We have pawn to a5. Alireza says, all right, you do that. I'm gonna wait. Uh, knight to d2 and now 
pawn to f5 by Alireza. Now uh, keeping around at the g4 square, but uh, Fabi just captures. We have e captures on f5. Bishop captures, knight captures. We have queen captures on f5, and now even bishop captures on c5, uh, eliminating this knight. Bishop captures on c5, and now we have knight to e4, attacking the bishop here and defending that uh, f2 